Okay guys, so today we're going to look at using some decorative background text. Have it fill the height of a container by changing font sizes, uh, margins, all that sort of stuff to make a track. So here's an example here where I've got a font in the background. If I change the heading size or this element size, that's, uh, that's to make this say 500 pixels. So you can see the top and the bottom of the font still touching the top and the bottom of the section, scaling with the section itself. This is not using any JavaScript. This is uses pure CSS using container query uh, units. And um, it is a little tricky because every single font is different. So you can see here we've got a baseline, which is like the bottom of this capital B, the bottom of that I, going along to the bottom of this two T's over here. That's what they call the baseline on a font. We've got some descenders, which is where like the G and the J come down below the baseline. And we have some ascenders like these dots on the eyes that go to the top. With this particular font, it lines up with the top of your capitals. With other fonts, it doesn't. Um, so there's a bunch of different metrics that make up fonts. I won't go into those here. But there's lots of different metrics on uh, spacing, kerning, uh, line heights, um, you know, your margin from your top, your bottom, your baseline, your descenders, descenders. Every single font is different, uh, which makes this a little tricky, but not impossible. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at how it's done. In the Bricks Editor, I have a basic section. And on that section, all I've done is added a background, and I've set the... Uh, to put, uh, there we go, the layout, I've set the position relative and the isolation to isolate. And that's so that we can fill that with the uh, decoration text using absolute positioning. So that's all we need on the section. That's the easy part. Now the decoration here, I've got a block, uh, which I've given a class name of decoration test. Under there, I've got a, another block, which I've given the class name of decoration test wrapper and then i've got some text which is the decoration text test okay and that's just a span on a basic text element we've got a container here which is some standard content and the reason i put that there is we can see if i say duplicate that uh, text there and the bricks editor is not updating so let me just refresh that we need some really quirky things happening with this bricks editor uh, at the moment, let me just refresh that editor. Okay, there we go. There, did I re? Oh, I did the wrong text. It wasn't. It wasn't bricks at all. It was me. So the wrist text here. I'm just going to duplicate that, and you can see the section height changed, and the text height changed accordingly. If we'll I do it again, you see exactly the same thing happen. So it tracks it nicely just using CSS. So how it works is what I've done is I've done all of my CSS on the CSS tab uh, to make it really clear as to what's happening. I haven't done anything with the Bricks UI. So let's have a look at the CSS tab of the block here. <coughs> and what we have is again our parent section is display of it's uh, sorry position of relative and isolation of isolate. So for our decoration block here, I've got it set to absolute inset 0, z index minus 1, which means it's going to fill the space of the section, and it's going to set the height of that to be the height of the section because of the inset of 0. z index of minus 1 it will not disappear behind the content of the section because the section's got isolation isolate. That's really, really simple there. The next bit here is the container type. We set the container type to size. The default container type tracks the inline or your width. Uh, when you set it to size, it tracks both the width and the height, which is what we want. Okay, I've got variables here for changing the line height of the actual text, font size, uh, the block start margin and the inline start margin so that we can position things around. And that's because Every single font is different, so we need to account for that. 
All right, so on our wrapper, so we've got a wrapper underneath our uh, block, and it's important to have that there because this is what's going to set our initial font size, which tracks the height of the container that it's in. So with containers, if you don't have a height, um, then it's all the CQB, CQI, or, sorry, CQB is always zero. So by putting it to inset, uh, it fills the section container, which gives us a height. So our 100 CQB or container query block will be the height of that container that's got the container type size set. <clears throat> then setting overflow to hidden because we want to clip the text um, inside that container. And then on our text itself, we want to set our white space to no wrap so that it goes, doesn't uh, wrap around, it goes all the way along. Uh, we want to set our line height to our variables up here, our font size to the variable up here, and our margin block start and margin inline start to the variables up here. That's it. That is all that you need to make this work. I'm going to show you where it gets tricky. At the moment, I think I'm using Arial or Helvetica. Um, I'm going to change the font just on that text there. So on that text, I'm going to change it from font from Helvetica to Georgia. Who dare? Look what's happened to our alignment of our text. So the ascenders are now clipped, uh, and the descenders are now not touching the bottom. Now that's because every font is different. So let's go back to our decoration text, and you can make. Uh, variables like you can actually create a set of these variables and give it a um a class and let's actually let's just do that i'm going to copy those i'm going to call it create a new class i'm going to call it decoration test uh, i'm going to do a dash dash georgia because georgia will have its own set of rules i never actually thought of this before but let's do that there I'm going to put those variables into the Georgia variation or uh, what do they call it? Um, modifier. So we've got a decoration test with all the standard CSS and on our test for Georgia, we're going to change some things. Okay, so let's start by making it so we can see the top of this. So let's set our block start margin to be minus two. Now we can see it's at the top, but it's clipping at the bottom. Right, so our text font size is too big, so let's make that 0 0.3, 0 0.3, that's just about right, 1.02, that's close, 1.02, 1, 2, one, two 4, yeah, it's getting close, 5, you can see the bottom of it getting very close to the end there. Now, sometimes you also have to change the line height because sometimes what happens when you change the font size without changing the line height, the descenders will clip. Uh, in fact, I think it might actually be doing that slightly. So let's change the text line height to 1.23. And we're going to move the margin block start to minus one, two, three. One. There we go, that's close enough, I think, right? So if I save that now, have a look at the front end. I've now fixed up my um, variables, so that actually looks like it's clipping a bit, so we're going to come down a little bit. Now, you can also do this from Chrome. So let's have a look in here and go to our Test Georgia. There's our Test Georgia. So that's a little bit too high. Let's say maybe too... Oh, seven. 202, 203. There we go. That's a bit better. And the bottom's actually touching there as well. So we can actually don't change any of that. So we can actually just grab that value there. Come back to our editor. And that was our uh, margin box start. Change that there. And that's perfect. All right. So now... If I go into Chrome DevTools and I duplicate that paragraph, duplicate the element, my section height has changed, my text is touching the top and the bottom. Duplicate the element again, 
Exactly the same. So it is a very nice way to track. You don't have to use SVGs, um, convert your text to SVGs. You can actually use fonts. Um, it does mean that your browser has to support container queries. This will work, but most do. If you don't, if you want to have a fallback, you can actually set a font size here. So you might set a font size of say 200 pixels, whatever it is. Um, so you can set a default font size here and you can maybe even change some of these uh, properties there and then you'll fall, that will be your fallback if it doesn't support container queries. <clears throat> Actually, not font size, font size, but anyway, get the point. Now, here's another really cool benefit of doing it this way. So what we've done is we've got a wrapper, which is clipping the text as it overflows, and our text is inside the wrapper. So that gives us an opportunity to animate, right? Look at our decoration test here. I'm just going to uncomment my animation and show you how that works. So all I've done is on my text element, so this text element here, um, I've just got an animation name of move left 50 over 30 seconds, do it infinitely over a linear pattern, a linear um, timing function, and just go from transformer none to translate x to minus 50 percent. Now we have text that's tracking the height and it's animating. So again, let's go to our our paragraph, and if we duplicate the paragraph, everything just works beautifully. Look at that. So the top and the bottom of that text is tracking beautifully. No JavaScript, just container queries, and it works nicely. Now you do get a little bit of a jump. The reason I did the 50% is what I'm doing with the text is I just double the text. So whatever I put there, so, so if this is a uh, J test, okay, Oop. and I'll just duplicate that and just make that double. So the idea is that when it goes to 50%, we should be seeing this at the far left. And then it should wrap around to the beginning. So you probably want to use some long text to avoid any jumpiness there. But let's have a look there. So I've just updated that text. And again, you know, we've got our dots on our eye hitting the top. We've got our dot uh, J, the dot hits the top. The J hits the bottom. Duplicate the P. And everything just adjusts nicely for you. So I think it's a cool way of doing it. Um, yeah, it's if if you want that kind of background text, um, I think it's a it's a nice solution rather than using JavaScript uh, uh, to do this. Anyway, hope you like it. If you do, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks, guys.